So let's move on to the next art form, which is Gondi art form. So before that, we need to understand who are the Gond community. So Gond is one of the largest community in the country. Gond ka jo uh, word hai, it derives from their own language, Gondi language, uh, may, uh, from the word Kond, which basically means green mountains. So people living in green mountains came to be called as Gond people. <clears throat> So here you can look at their population as for uh, as according to the 2011 census, the uh, Goan community, we know that they are a large community. So they have uh, been distributed. They are, they can be seen in various states like Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Maharashtra, Orissa, Uttar Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Bihar, Karnataka, Jharkhand, West Bengal, Gujarat. Every state will have some or the other population of Goan people. Constitutionally, they are a scheduled tribe. Their language is Gondi language, which is very closely related to uh, Telugu and comes under the Dravidian language family, right? So in 2014, uh, near a village called Gunjala, so several manuscripts were found dating as far as 1750, through which the Gunjala Gondi Lippi was created, a specific or a uh, uh, precise script for the Gondi language, right? Goan people are also known uh, by various other names. Koi and Koitur are one of uh, the couple of names. Right? <clears throat> so we know that they are one of the oldest or the largest community. So let's look at them from a historical perspective. So they used to have their own uh, kingdom called Gondwana, which was from the period of 13th to 19th century AD. So just need to understand ki kitna purana ye kingdom, kitna saal tak chala tha. So the boundaries of the Gondwana kingdom was from East Madhya Pradesh to West Odisha, North Andhra Pradesh to Southeast Uttar Pradesh, right? And we've also looked into the fact that uh, Gonds had uh, were there during the Mughal period as well. And Rani Durgavati, who was the ruler of the Gond people during that time, fought against Akbar in 1564, where she uh, died in that battle, right? So after that, briefly, the Gond, uh, Gondwana kingdom was under the Mughals, while in 1740s, when Marathas came to prominence, they totally disposed the Gondwana, Gondwana kingdom. So here you can see the Gond Mahal, which is in Bhairapura, an ASI monument taken again from uh, Wikipedia. So. <clears throat> so let's understand a little bit about the society, Gond society. You know that they are a very large community, so they should have some of the other uh, branches or variety in their society. So they have various various branch, branches depending on what role they play for the larger Gond community. So the, the highest one is the Raj Gonds, which are landowners basically. Jinke pas zameen hai, unhe Raj Gond kaha jata hai, and they enjoy a very high status among their villages and the community. Then another branch is the Pradhan Gonds or Pardhan Gonds, which are considered the creative aspect of the uh, community. They maintain, they maintain the culture, mythology, and the history of the community through Bardic traditions. Now, I, I hope everybody understands when I say the Bardic traditions. There are various other branches as well, Madhya Gonds, Durve Gonds, Khatulwar Gonds, and several few more, depending on which region we are looking at. Uh, and they play uh, their own role for the community. Now, in this particular community, we can see they follow cross, uh, cross cousin marriage. There's also interclan marriage. Raj Gonds can marry within uh, with Padhan Gonds, but not among Raj Gonds. So that sort of thing, which we even saw among the Rabaris. Uh, interclan uh, marriage, widow remarriage, and divorce is also acceptable in these communities. The dead are buried, uh, but also cremated. So you can see both aspects of it. It's a very interesting ritual called Karun, which happens after the death of a certain individual, which uh, ritual represents aiding the passage of the spirit of that dead person from one, uh, one world to the other with the acceptance of all clan spirits. So you have a lot of clan deities in this particular community as well. <clears throat> so what is the religion of the Gons like? So it's very closer to Hinduism due to its political, economic, military interaction with the outside world. So this particular community has a long period of time where they've interacted with the larger communities or the other uh, communities that were there in the country, other kingdoms, other uh, empires that were there. So they have their own uh, impact of Hinduism on their own religion, but basically it revolves around animism and shamanism and a combination of both, both of them. So they worship nature and ancestors, 
और दे आर चीफ गॉड और मेन गॉड ऑफ दी गोंड पैंथियन इज बड़ा देव और श्री भगवान और श्री शंभु महादेव who is uh, the overseer of all gods basically he does the uh, he does the job where he just looks after the gods ke aap apka kaam barabar se kar rahe ho ke nahi now bada dev can be best understood as the in another interpretation of lord shiv right so this is how bada dev is portrayed in the gond art style so you can just understand ke kis tarike se portray kiya jata hai so we already looked into the fact ke they have several clan deities jisko parsa pen kaha jata hai jaise कुलदेवी कुलदेव था जैसे हमने अभी देखा था तो इसमें बोंगा थे तो यहाँ पे क्लैन डिटीज को पैरसा पेन कहा जाता है सो दे ऑल्सो हैव शामनिज्म तो इफ दे इज अ शामन विद इन फॉर अ पर्टिकुलर विलेज तो उसे देवरी कहा जाएगा इफ दे इज अ शामन फॉर द एंटायर क्लैन तो इट विल बी कॉल्ड कटोरा राइट सो शीतला माता वन ऑफ द डिटीज दैट इज दे वर्शिप लॉर्ड सो शी इज बेसिकली गॉड टू प्रोटेक्ट अगेंस्ट डिजीजेस Uh, what are the festivals they follow? So Pola, which is a cattle festival, Nag Panchami, Dasara, among a few others, including Holi. Holi is another important festival of the Gonds. So there uh, used to be a practice of uh, extensive uh, practice of sacrifice, from animal sacrifice to even episodes or instances of human sacrifice as well. And another uh, interesting uh, <coughs> ritual that they follow is, or a festival, a small festival is called Laru Kaj. basically it means pig's wedding which is a ceremony in relation to god narayan dev <coughs> sorry just give me a sec okay so now let's try to learn little bit about their art uh, we looked into the society and the theology and everything तो आठ पे आते हैं तो ट्रेडिशन इज एज ओल्ड एज फोर्टीन हंड्रेड इयर्स ओल्ड फ्रॉम दी मेसोलिथिक टाइम पीरियड इन लुक एट फाउंड इन फॉर्म ऑफ केव पेंटिंग्स अगेन केव पेंटिंग्स से शुरुआत होती है एज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग बिलीफ अमंग द गोन पीपल दे बेसिकली बिलीव के व्यूइंग अ गुड पिक्चर और अ गुड पेंटिंग ब्रिंग्स देम गुड लक व्हिच इज अ प्राइमरी रीजन व्हाई आर्ट इज एन सच एन इंटीग्रल पार्ट ऑफ द गोन पीपल right so they are done their walls their floors or uh, their even certain aspects of their ceilings jo bhi jahan bhi available uh, art form kar sakte hain wahan pe art form kiya jata hai jata hai right but gondi art is basically another uh, form of mural art divara pe kiya jata hai the paintings on floors is called dhigna jahan pe aap ye dekh sakte hain uh, ek image rakhi hai ki dhigna kis tarah the dhigna is basically uh, best understood as a another version of rangoli rangoli ke bahut various versions hai india mein तो उसमें से एक ये टाइप का होता है जिसको जिसमें टेराकोटा क्ले भी यूज करके अलग अलग शेप्स बनाए जाते हैं तो दैट इज सॉर्ट ऑफ अ सेमी परमानेंट सेटअप ऑफ देखना राइट उसके अलावा दे आर वेरी आर्टिस्टिकली इंक्लाइंड सो दे हैव वेरियस वर्जन ऑफ पॉटरी इंक्लूडिंग हाउस होल्ड एलिमेंट जैसे बास्केट्स केन्स फिशिंग के लिए अलग होता है उसके अलावा घर की डेकोरेशन के लिए भी पॉटरी यूज होता है बैम्बू क्राफ्ट भी बहुत ही इंटरेस्टिंग uh, uh, उनका स्टाइल होता है दे हैव टैटू का ट्रेडिशन एज वेल सो गोंड आर्ट के नॉट बी कम्पलीटेड विदाउट टॉकिंग अबाउट जांगर सिंह शाम सो लेट्स ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड और लर्न अबाउट हु इज दिस पर्टिकुलर जेंटलमैन और ग्रेट इंडिविजुअल सो द स्टोरी गोज के वेन भारत भवन वॉज एस्टेब्लिश्ड इन एम पी it is an organization catered to the arts and crafts of the country so it's uh, that uh, name of the institution who was being headed by jagdish swaminathan ji and swaminathan ji used to go around serving the various villages that are there in around bhopal so one day he came across very beautiful murals and he started asking people ke who was the artist behind it and that is how basically he met with jangar singh sham ji when he was just 17 years old so swaminathan ji invited him to bharat bhavan in bhopal and asked him to make very beaut- uh, large murals which are very beautiful and are still there for people to see and that is how basically he became uh, very famous instantly and he is considered the first uh, gond artist uh, who has received any sort of recognition uske baad pura ek large amount of uh, artists ko aage aaye hain and because of his style because of his the manner in which he used to do uh, he was considered to the be the, or termed to be picasso of india right so jangar singh sham was born in the pradhan gond community of the patangad village in mandla district of mp 
So because of the exposure with Bharat Bhavan, he had received a lot of international rec uh, renown. He visited and uh, participated in several international conventions. And sadly, in 2001, he committed suicide when he was just 37 years old. The style in which he started to portray Gondi art uh, had a lot of uh, impact, of, a lot of a strong element of storytelling. He usually used to try and portray his mythology, uh, Gond mythology in this artwork. And the style became renowned as Jangad Kala, the Jangad style of painting or Jangad school of art, basically, in specificity to the Gond style. So what are the motives that we can look at in Gond art? So motives are basically inspirations from the Gond culture, oral heritage, myths, folklore, and legends. A lot of strong element of storytelling, uh, gods, nature, animals, music, and all things in their surrounding. Jo bhi unke aspas jo wo dekhte hain, wo bhi incorporate art form mein kiya jata hai. What are the main themes or main motives? Kya kya hum dekhte to animal motives, mein, peacocks, crabs, and all the animals that are listed down here. Tree of life, or in this particular context, it is the Mahua tree, which is represented in various aspects. Mahura plays a very important role among the Goan community. It is uh, in, uh, in reality, in the day to day life, it is a very important uh, source of several other things, like including you can make oil from it, alcohol from it, use it for medicine, use it for vegetables, and that is why Mahuwa tree ko Bhagwan kar dada diya jata hai samaj mein. Mythology ke uh, jo motives hai, usme humne dekh liye ke you can see gods, okay, interpretation, so Bada Dev ka humne painting dekha hai, daily life of the Kohan people, apart from that, uh, Lord Ganesha, Lord Shiv, and various versions of Parvati, hum dekh sakte hai. Parsapen Devi is like full de uh, Fulvari Devi, who is another version of Kali, Jalharin Devi, goddess of river, etc. As the deities we have taken, and several legends and stories which are showcased in the mythology and the stories of the Gon community. <clears throat> now, what is the technique? If you want to look at it from a technical perspective, Gon art com kaise dekh sakte? So it has very uh, high use of or a very expressive use of dots which derives from the tradition of their tattoo making. So tattoo making ka culture hum go and art mein dekhte, so expressive use of dots. All go and, art, go and arts have extremely well showcased balance and symmetry, like you can see in this particular image and the images that we'll see down the line, very vibrant and very bright colors, charcoal, soil, plant sap, leaves, cow dung, all these ingredients were used, whichever and whatever is available in their vicinity to make natural source of colors, right? and the pigments for colors. So yeah, these are some images shared by my friends of the Gond uh, people or Gond people have shared with you. So <clears throat> uh, tree of life, animal motives, daily life, you can clearly see kaise vibrant colors here, the expressive use of dots, lines, symmetry, all the aspects that we've discussed can clearly see through this painting. These are again can canvas paintings. Uh, I did not have the uh, opportunity to visit several villages where I can actually see a traditional form mein dekh shaku, again due to shortage of time. Yeah, okay. So again, tree of life, daily life, there's some music and dance going on on the left, animal figurines on the right. Again, okay, so I just skipped. So this is, uh, this particular has an entire story behind it. So if there's time at the end of the session, just remind me, I'll come back to it and try and share that story. Okay, so on the left is how Kali and her various versions or Parvati ke various versions or Shakti ke alag alag variations kis tarik se dikhaya jate hai. So artist Shambhu Tekam ji has showcased how he looks at Parvati or Kali version of Parvati through the perspective of Gond culture and heritage. On the right is an image of or a painting from artist Pradeep Maraviji. He is also a very well-renowned artist. So yeah, slightly different style to the earlier ones. Okay, so again on the left, uh, pay attention for the painting on the left done by artist Narmada Prasad Tekanji is a very 
uh, experienced and ex uh, elder artist of the community. He has received several uh, state and national recognitions for his uh, contribution in gold art. And the pa painting that we see is depicting uh, the incident of how uh, Arjun pierces the eye of the fish uh, to uh, uh, yeah, uh, wala jo shadi wala incident hai, from the perspective of the Goan people. I lost my track, sorry. Uh, yeah, on the right again, we can see animal motives and the tree of life. Yeah. Okay, so now you comes to look at kya aap kitna attention de rahe hai, and if you guys are all awake, I will require your participation. Uh, the question here is very simple. Just tell me which painting among the two is Warli and which is not Warli. So okay. No, sir. Yeah, so try which is Warley, which is not Warley. <clears throat> try to keep here. It's just a guessing game. Warley, maybe. Which one? Left one or the right one? That is the question. Left. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. It's a simple question. I don't think it is a very difficult question. Left or right, which is Warley, which is not Warley. Both are Warli, left, left, okay. Left one is Warli, any more? I don't know how to. Yeah, give me a minute. Okay, so no more guesses. Okay, so neither of them are Warli. That's the correct answer. So what are these paintings too? So these paintings are the Edithal art form. So the answer was right in front of you guys at the bottom, it is, was clearly mentioned. It is from Odisha. The artists have written their names. So just uh, observation kitna strong hai. Ye exercise ek thi uske liye. Ke how much guys are you paying attention to in the entire thing? So yeah, you guys need to work a lot harder on your observation. So these are basically Edithal art form. So who practices or kaha se Edithal hai? So Edithal is practiced or the art form closely associated with the Lanjia Saura community of Odisha. You know, I already shared ke Marathi and Odi, Odia languages share a lot of similarities. So again, another aspect or another interesting fact about these particular regions, aap pe art form ke dekh sakte. So if you look at them, Warli ka impact or Warli ke kitana similar hai, yaha pe dikta hai, but they are totally, totally different. So let's first and try and understand ke who are the Lanjia Saura. So you can see the population, their names vary from region to region. They are also called Saura, Sora, Saura, Savara, Sabara, and Lanjia Saura as well. So they are an Australoid race, very closely related to the Aborigines of the Australian continent. One of the oldest communities in the country, Odisha and Andhra Pradesh is where we can go and meet them. Their language is called Sora, which belongs to the Mundari branch or the Austro-Asiatic language family. Now in 1963, Mange Gumango ji ne Sorang Sompeng naam se unki script develop ki hai. So they also have a script now, right? <clears throat> so the Sora language has been termed vulnerable to extinction by UNESCO as well and their constitutional status is PVTG. Now we've already looked into what PVTG means. I hope you guys remember, but if you don't, it, particular, it means particularly vulnerable tribal groups. So they too are under a threat or they too are a vulnerable tribal group. 
so let's try and figure out or understand or learn what the name or what their name means it has several different meanings uh, the word sora if they have been referred to as sora has it derives from two words which of which so means hidden and ara means tree so basically people hidden in the trees right then they are also referred to as langia saura so langia basically comes from uh, the meaning or the context meaning having a tail which is derived from their traditional loin cloth of which we'll look into uh, uh, next slide mein aap image dikhaunga jis mein aapko thoda idea aayega so how does they, they how do they get the uh, reference of calling langia saura Now, saura is said to have also been derived from the scythian word sagoris meaning axe they have a very uh, in, uh, very unique axe that they usually carry all the way all the time so that can be another uh, derivation or another interpretation of the name saura can also be said to have originated from the sanskrit uh, sanskrit term sabarai which basically means carrying a dead body so that can be several different meanings of their names so this i just concentrated on this image uh give me okay so considered on the image and the uh, small loin cloth that this gentleman is wearing so the front part as you can see uh, is uh, loose in the front so it's chota part hota hai and has a very larger uh, uh, tail like looking longer part at the rear so that is how they get the term calling as langia so basically that basically means langia to tail jaisa dikhta hai isliye unhe langia saura bhi kaha jata hai now uh, they do not have a, a clan system in their community they are all equal uh, according to them but they have a, a system of lineage organization basically it is called birinda uh, they are agriculture to agro laborers they have very small villages on hills with stone boundaries they have clear, uh, uh, clear cut boundaries that they create with using stone in it around to signify their boundaries the village head is called gomango and the shamans have both men and women in their society uh the male shaman is called kudan and the female shaman is called kudan bai <clears throat> so you can see the axe in this it's slightly it's uh, different from the uh axes that we usually see okay so let's try and understand ke what type of religion do they follow so their religion is a mixture of various elements they worship nature ancestors and various spirits with uh, showcasing clearly following animism and shamanism as well or combination of both so their deities are called sonum sonum or sonumam so different names of their deities sauras have interestingly both good and evil uh, deities acche bhagwan bhi hai aur bure bhagwan bhi hai but they usually worship evil deities because they fear uh, due to the uh fear aspect if we do not worship these deities uh, some or the other harm will come on upon us so let's try and understand ke which are the various deities that they uh, worship so then the first is manduasum uh, who is basically the protector or deity of the village who protects them from wild animals and epidemics then comes sandisum deity of protection and safety for people that's his role basically then comes judisum also called jodisum he is a deity for protection against bad spirits forest deities diseases property damage natural disasters as well and it can also be uh, very he is also very closely related to being their village deity the most common village deity is the chudisum or jodisum then comes jananglasu deity to cure diseases and obtain blessings then sarpalasu god of path when you want to travel you have to take uh, roads or walk on road so worship some other deity like that then comes sidangpur who is the deity for good crop then isarasum deity to help departed souls enter the underworld or the deity who has the role to take that soul from this world to that world so these are the various deities apart from that they have several other deities as well various uh, duties that they are associated with them so sauras have a very interesting uh, oral literature oral heritage is very interesting in this particular community they have an original origin story which is called kuretum katabir it's a very lengthy epic 
retelling several aspects of various uh, of their how they originated and what their people did and all so on and so forth it's a very large large epic so basically what does a kuretung mean the kuretung comes from the vegetable bottle god right so what why is it called uh, kuretung or bottle god se kyu unke aur literature ka naam hai it is believed that the first saura or the first father of the saura community was born from the kuretung after which he disappeared in the forest and hills and made them their home so basically the first couple or the first father or the first mother depending on how we are getting that story they uh, got uh, they came into this world from the kuretung or the bottle god and soon they disappeared ran away and disappeared in the forest which is where uh, we usually find them on on hills and that is where the uh, saura villages are so shabri from the ramayana shabri ke be wala jo incident ki shabri hai she is also the uh, she is also a saura so that is how we get their association in the myths and the epics that we have and jawa jara savara from mahabharata is also a saura member or savara member the story around jara savara is that the hunter who shot an arrow in the foot of uh, lord krishna eventually which led to his death was jara savara uh, who was a saura so the incident tells us ke jaise jara savara ne arrow uh, uh, as soon as he shot the arrow he came to the realization that he has done a mistake he goes to lord krishna who forgives him immediately and tells him that this is the fate that was supposed to happen so no harm or no uh, wrong doing is from your part uh, feel free to not feel any guilt because this is how i was supposed to die and then uh, his body uh, is then uh, his body falls in the water where it gets converted into a large unique piece of wood and it floats away in several down, uh, several kilometers down the line it comes up on the shore of a small town jahan pe wo lakde ko rescue kiya jata hai and three unique uh, deities or idols are made from that particular wood which today we can see in from uh, in form of the deities or idols that are there in jagannath puri so jagannath puri ka jo idols hai they are said to be made from the wood or the body which uh, of lord krishna so that is how uh, the story goes uh, relating to jawa savara or the saura community in ramayana and mahabharata so now let's look and uh, try and understand or learn a little bit about how edittal art is done so edittal is again not labeled as a piece of art it is uh, portrayed or explained to us that it is a form of writing a form of literature portrayed or presented in form of a pictogram so just so we have the hieroglyphic script of the egyptians it can be understood in that manner as well so it is basically trying to tell you a story so it uh, can be best uh, option would be to look at it in form of a pictogram so there are several elements in the entire painting of the edittal art so these can be called either etalons or icons right each icon or etalon has a significant relation to some part of their culture rituals or ethno theological association right and each edittal is unique it is an independent dialogue yeah so no two edittals can be uh, similar uh, you will not find it basically and edittal can have several sections depending on what conversation is or which ritual it is for ma- made for which deity is it referring to or which festival it is for or whatever is the reason behind creation of the edittal every edittal talks to us in a different way trying to tell us a different story right so what are the most recurring etalons or icons so you'll have lot of human figures very similar in the style of what we can best understand from the perspective of our own uh, maharashtrian art to varli se bahut juda style hai uh, so human figures several uh, uh, animal figures horses elephants are most common celestial uh, or cosmic uh, artic uh, motifs like sun moon then we can see the umbrella of universe which i'll show you in a little while a uh, very common and most recurring uh, motif several uh, snails scorpions porcupines lizards various animals and tiger and if you see the tiger it is basically the vehicle of earth like we saw in pithora ki kyu horses uh, and how horses are interpreted by the community so in this particular aspect if we look at uh, coming up against uh, if you look at a motif showcasing as a tiger so it is a vehicle of earth motifs related to their shamans kundan bai or kundan bai again a variation in the name several geometrical shapes dancers musicians and all elements or any elements related to day to day life 
once again let's go back to the first couple of image so that i can show you some important aspects okay so the tree of life this is the image of tree of life so most common or the umbrella of universe or tree of life or various interpretations for it so let's first try and understand k okay, when we talk k okay, there are independent sections so every section is a different thing like this section is an individual story that is telling so they are basically trying to portray your know, day to day life you know kya kya different activities play karte hain so you have uh, uh, trade being done here traveling from one place to other different activities somebody carrying something somebody selling something so these kind of elements will come up over here to show ke think ke wo how the how closely uh, close the saura community is this will be an independent section talking about some uh, independent story that is there in relation to either a god or the festival or different versions every section is an independent aspect of it similarly here 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 in most editorial painting that's a very common thing it all depends on what is the exact context of the entire art form now first we need to understand ke editorial kab practically uh, practice mein kaise aata hai so one aspect of it is ke the woman shaman or kudan bai ko uh, kudan bai will get a uh, dream that from some celestial world being either a deity or an ancestor or a god to tell some family member that this is the reason why why which she should or they should uh, uh, create the edithal in their houses or the eldest woman in the in a nuclear family will get a message in a dream similar message and then she will invite the shamans and the kudan bai will create the edithal art form depending on what the context is that is how the entire it gets into a uh, practice one part of it so then if you have an harvest before an harvest they had always perform edithal in a ritualistic manner which will tell you different stories of it which uh, which will have conversations with individual gods related to harvest evil gods good gods everything thanking a god for good harvest and so on and so forth so you have different context different interpretations of each edithal nobody will be very similar you can clearly see these two are totally different yeah this is totally different and again this is totally different yeah just trying to tell you nobody will uh, no two editors will ever look the same <clears throat> okay so let's move on to another interesting art form called godna now what is godna so to understand godna art we need to understand or learn about two communities now this has uh, godna art has involvement of two communities so there is bega community and the badi community so let's first look at the bega community and who they are so according to the census this is the population they reside in the central indian provinces various uh, locations their constitutional status is particularly vulnerable tribal group they speak their own unique language called bagani language which comes under the austro asiatic language family but they also speak very good hindi <clears throat> they practice very uh, they usually practice small to medium scale shifting style of agriculture and there's a very unique concept among the bega people that they will never use very sharp tools or big implements or tools to do their farming the uh, you will use blunt tools or predominantly uh, also use of hands is done for agriculture so why is that they believe that the earth is their mother so apni hi mata ki chhati pe war nahi kar sakte isliye hum blunt tools aur haath se hi farming karte hain so they have extensive knowledge of traditional medicines within the fam, uh, within their uh, uh, community they are also do they also practice hunter gathering they have extensive knowledge of forest and all the knowledge related to do how to maintain and balance of the forest or how to basically manage a forest that all information is there extensively among them so now let's move on to another aspect of it okay badi community so we looked at ba the bega community and if you look up badi community on google there be there is no information available to us so to understand the badis we need to go to the community uh, the government reports and the census reports and work done by the various ngos in and around this region so 
So I'm not going to share into that. But what I'm going to want to talk to you is the origin story of Godna, right? So first we need to understand that Godna art के बारे में क्या है? Godna क्या है? So Godna is basically a tattoo uh, originates from the term tattoo. It's a basically a traditional method of making tattoos. So how does the tradition of tattoos come to the uh, fore? So there's a story behind it. Say that once upon a time, the Bega people, the region in which the Bega people were staying, there was a massive drought. Shortage of water was extensive. Rainfall was very poor. So the leaders of the Bega community were Naga Bega and Naga Begni. So they were appointed or given the task by the Bega people to go and talk to Lord Shiv to so seek solution or seek remedy to the issue of water. So Naga Bega and Naga Begni traveled to. Where Shiv lived, and they asked him, "Ke ham jahan rehte hain, pani ka problem bahut ho raha hai, so help us to solve this problem." But Lord Shiv tells them, "This is not my department. This is the department of Bhagwan Indra. So you'll have to go to his court to ask for this uh, remedy for this situation." So Naga Begni tells him, "Ke I am in my, I am in a nude uh, state. I do not, our community do not wear clothes, and I am nude." If I go in this particular state to in the court of Bhagwan Indra, he will get angry. He might get offended. He might feel embarrassed, and the, instead of uh, solving our problems, it will create a different kind of a problem for us. And I will also get into trouble, and my people will also suffer because of that. So then, Lord Shiv tells uh, the, the Bega, Bega people that this can be solved easily, and he gives life to the Badi community people. Now, Badi community people were given only one task by Lord Shiv after their creation is to do tattoos on all the bod bodies of all Bega women. So the first Badi people get born and they create tattoos on Naga Begni. She goes, uh, she and Naga Bega go to the court of Bhagwan Indra, who accepts their demand and uh, ensures that there will be no problem to about monsoon or rainfall or shortage of water from now on, and that is how they. Live their lives. So this is other story of how Godna came into this origin uh, and how one community was created by Lord Shiv just to do tattoos. So now we next need to understand that Badi logo ko or the Badi community why are they called Badi? So सबसे बाद जन्म लेने वाला समाज है इसलिए हमें Badi कहा जाता है. That is how the community tries to tell us that why what is the context behind their name or the meaning behind their name. So we uh, let's understand Godna ya Godna do naam se jana jata hai. It is a traditional method of making tattoos. It's very closely associated with the culture of the Bega community, but practiced by several different communities as well. So in this particular case, I am specifically talking about the Bega in relation to the Badi community. So the tattoo makers or the people who create the tattoos are from the Badi community, or jinke body pe tattoo hota hai. These are Bega women. So yeah, again, uh, some images that I've taken from Sahapedia, just to give you a little glimpses of how the entire tradition is done. So this is an image showcasing that ink, which is made by what way. So it's basically kajal, kajal ka istemal karke small needle se wo uh, traditional matter se wo tattoo ki jati. There's no machine involved in it. So this is an image of first uh, how they practice beginning of the tattoo or the first tattoo. How is it done and where is it done? So depending on what shape is it is in done. So that shape will particularly uh, define the entire context. So if it it varies from community to community. It also uh, is a symbol of what occupation or what role do they play within that community. So वो उस तरीके से भी देखा जा सकता है. But in this particular case, the first tattoo, which is done by the Bega women, is on their forehead or the temple. So here again, I just wanting to show a okay, needle, which I was saying. So in which is actually a couple of needles uh, brought together, thread se band ke, three four needles. It's slightly similar to the sewing machine, ke jo needles jo hamare hote hain. Usse hi. Uh, so there are a couple of two, three needles एक साथ join किए गए हैं with the use of thread और वहाँ पे tattoo किया जा रहा है. So in uh, some 
बहुत टाइम से यू कैन सी द इवॉल्विंग ऑफ आर्ट हम देख ही रहे हैं कि कैसे ट्रेडिशनल मेथड से अब ये वो कैनवस पे आ रहा है सो गोदना इज ऑल्सो नाउ ऑन कैनवस इट वॉज बॉट चामर सिंह मरावी जी हुज अ वेरी एमिनेंट आर्टिस्ट ऑफ दिस जॉनरा एज वेल एज अ वेरी गुड टैटू मेकर एज वेल तो चामर सिंह मची के ऊपर ट्राइबल ट्रेनिंग रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट जिसकी जिक्र कल विपुल सर ने भी की थी तो यू हैव द ट्राइबल ट्रेनिंग रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट इन ऑलमोस्ट एवरी स्टेट सो भोपाल में एम पी का वर्जन यहाँ पे भोपाल में है तो भोपाल के जो वो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है और इंस्टीट्यूशन है उन्होंने चामर सिंह जी के ऊपर बहुत सारा काम करके उनके स्टाइल के रिसर्च करके दे हैव कम्पाइल्ड सेवरल बुक्स एंड ही he has a lot of documentation being done on him he is a very senior artist of this particular genre and his daughter and his wife also practice this art mangla maravi is his daughter jinka humne image yahan pe bhi dekh rahe she is the same lady in this particular image as well so she has she travels all around the country uh, participating in various uh, workshops and conventions jahan bhi indigenous art form ka kuch hota hai mangla maravi is always present she does a, a fantastic work tattoos bhi karti hai aur wo canvas art bhi karti hai and their family is basically trying to preserve ke jo skill hai use kis tarike se dikhaye so this particular painting jo yahan pe humne photograph mein dekh rahe so it will just showcase you ke the extent of tattoos done on the bega movement ke body pe jo ye tattoo hota hai wo kahan se kahan tak from all the way from forehead to their ankles tak pura body cover hota hai so how is it looked at godna how is, do the bega women look at godna in tradition so they look, call it eternal jewelry ya yeah, amar gain so what is the behind uh, message behind it or the context behind when i say amar gain the bega women believe when people die or when the begas die they cannot take anything from the living world to the underworld apart from the body uh, tattoos on their body so that is why they decorate their bodies as much as possible with tattoo style so the first godna begins at puberty it's the first tattoo on the forehead like we see in this particular image then the final tattoo is done after the birth of your first child which is called chhati godna the entire process of godna is practiced in the forest because there is a, a belief among the begas that it is not auspicious or not a good sign for the men to witness uh, the women bleeding uh so that is why it is completely done in the forest there it has several connotations to the aspects of healing and traditional methods uh so uh, it believe ke agar aapko ghutne pe ghutne ka dard hai to ye type ka tattoo kijiye to ghutna dard ghutne uh, ka dard chala jayega if you have eyesight problems do this tattoo on your forehead to ye ho jayega temple pe ye tattoo karenge to aapka headache band ho jayega and there are several connotation different motives jiske jis tarah style of tattoos kiye jate hain to prevent them from various uh, style, uh various other aspects as well so this is an image of showcasing ke chhati godna after the birth of your first child is tarike se tattoo hota hai so this basically is the final aspect of the tattoo so what are the motives if you want to look at it in form of a motive so it again has eons and eons thousands of years ka pura ye tradition hai it again can be looked at in historical perspective in form of cave paintings jo bahut sare regions mein dekhe gaye and then it can also be seen uh, seen migrating or transmitting in form of uh, tattoos on skin there are different meanings of different motives of which i am not going to tell you a lot of about it because it will take me too much longer period of time uh, but yeah so you have rites of passage which is basically the circle of life and death uh, flora and fauna ke elements dikhte hain and uh, mythical motifs bhi hum bahut kam hai ke dekh sakte hain so this particular image mein jaise aap ye motif ek unique motif dekh rahe hain this all individual motif or the style will tell you something or the other or context or which meaning behind it so we have uh, like for example there's a tattoo which specifically tells jahan cha wahan ra wherever there is a will there is a way so you have different connotations regarding individual motives including various other aspects as well 